What's going on guys? Tonight we've got part two of the TTR build. The only thing we've done to it so far is the FMF Power Core 4 full exhaust. Today we're going to start suspension. All right, so we got a host of parts here. Um, first thing is going to be BBR damping rods. Now I know this doesn't have to be done when you do the uh, suspension upgrade as little as it costs. A kind of might as well go ahead and do thing. We've also got the BBR heavy duty fork springs. These are rated for up to 300 pounds. So these should make a heck of a difference. Now this right here, I'm sure everybody can guess what it is. This is the heavy duty shock for the TTR. But we are gonna wait on this because I do have another option that I do wanna try first. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not, uh, but there is a company out there called JTI Products and they basically make these conversion kits for KLX 110L shocks. We're gonna try that first. I got my hands on one of those shocks for really, really cheap off eBay. So we're gonna end up trying that, but tonight we're gonna go ahead and get started on these forks. So if you like the position of your bars as they sit, um, it's probably best to go ahead and mark them up. That way you can um, you know, line them back up exactly where you want them. All right, so once you get the handlebars taken down, basically you're just gonna pop this um, rubber grommet off and there's gonna be a C-clip that's holding this seal in this uh, in the fork you're gonna push down on the spring and relieve that tension and the idea is to pop that c clip out now what you got to be careful of and keep in mind that this spring is going to be loaded when you push it down so you don't want the top of this fork coming up all right first thing that comes out of the ttr is going to be the spacer so you may be asking yourself why I did it with the forks on the bike. So I don't have a vise. And if you don't have a vise, the best thing is gonna be is this triple clamp and then just loosen it up, take the wheel off, bring them forks off and, um, and do it that way. So if you're doing it this way, once you have the top caps out, and have everything on the internals exposed and you can go ahead and get this front wheel off and, um, and take these forks out. All right, so the forks are out and we can go ahead and start draining the wool out of here and pulling the the uh, shock spring out of here. All right, so we got the spring exposed. We can go ahead and get this out. And what you want to do is you want to compress the spring a couple times to make sure that you get all of this old oil out of here. So sitting on top of the spring, you've also got this washer right here. TTRs have that spacer that we first pulled out so this ring is gonna go between the shock and that spacer. The rule of thumb with springs and shocks are gonna be the more coils, the better. You've got about double the coils on this BBR spring. Obviously a lot stiffer. All right, so we got the first shock drained and we're gonna go ahead and drain the second one as well. So the last step here, gotta get these, uh, these damping rods out. So I'm not sure how difficult it's gonna to be to get these out, especially without advice, but we're gonna try. So once you break the damping rod loose, it should just screw out pretty easy. All right, so once you get this, once you get this damping rod out, basically you'll see the damping rod itself and this spring here, you will have to reuse this spring. So just keep that in mind. Once you have damping rod out though, you can pull the fork tube all the way out, drain any more oil that you have in there. All right, so the BBR damping rods obviously are a heck of a lot bigger. They're a lot stronger. And you're, what you'll see 
is this bike raised up by about a good inch and a half, two inches. So to get this thing put back on, basically you're going to put the fork tube back into the shock and you are going to put the damping rods back in. If you jiggle the screw down at the bottom, you can feel when the damping rod is back mounted. And you should be able to start threading it on. And one way you can check is to make sure that that screw won't pull out any. As long as you got that little bit of pressure there, then you can just kind of pull the, pull the fork tube and just tighten it back on. All right, so once you got the damping rod in, go ahead and install your fork spring. We'll see it right here at the top. Don't forget to install your washer. So based on how hard this is actually gonna be to get back together, it's probably a hundred times better to simply use a vise or borrow a vise from somebody. But we're gonna try to do it this way. As long as I can get one side on, we'll be good to go. I misplaced my ratio right as well. So I'm gonna show you something that I honestly don't recommend anybody else doing. So basically you saw me draining the oil earlier into this Deer Park bottle. What I've done, is grabbed a third Deer Park bottle and measured it to the exact same height as well. Full disclosure, I don't recommend anybody doing it this way, but if you do, make sure to use a completely dry bottle and make sure there's no dents or anything in the bottle so your volume is correct. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this oil pour back in here and allow that to drain just a second just to make sure we get everything in there. All right, so here comes the fun part. I don't happen to be an octopus, and this is really at least a three-hand job. We're gonna see what happens. What's, I've actually gotta pull these forks up, push this down, and install this C-clip. All right, guys, so we've got one side successfully on and installed. That was literally one of the hardest things I've ever had to do by myself. Like I said, I would definitely not recommend anyone trying to do it this way unless they absolutely had to. I will say this is where the suspension used to ride at. Um, so it has come up a good two inches. That being said, we'll go ahead and get this, um, get this other one knocked out. This one should go a heck of a lot faster. All right, so this right fork came together really, really easy. I can only imagine how easy of a job this would be if you had a bench vise. All right, so I'm thinking this one's gonna have to be a lot easier to get back on. Could be wrong, though. We got the uh, BBR heavy duty springs and damping rods installed. This was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do on a dirt bike, not because the job itself was hard, but based on the tools that I had at my disposal. So I ended up getting about an inch and a half of, um, of height out of those damping rods. So that's gonna make a significant difference. The spring rate, is also a hell of a lot better too. Um, now when I get that KLX 110L shock put on, that's also gonna drop this rear wheel down about two inches as well. All right guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We got a lot of stuff coming. 
Mason is starting to really, really ride a lot now. We've also got Gator right here and this gooseneck trailer that we've gotten a lot of requests on. This is something that I uh, custom built myself. And if you want to see more videos on that, then we can get to posting those too. For the most part, a lot of these videos are going to be me, Madeline, Mason, even Elise out here riding. So we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.